Hello and welcome to the Thinking Marketing Podcast, where we dive deep with people from the cutting edge of marketing. Today, I'm super excited to be joined by Michael Baumgartner. He's really at the cutting edge, building a company that will allow marketers to get fully AI-generated video ads to use in paid social, organic social, on the website, or wherever they want. So we're really talking about changing the industry and how we use video in marketing today. In the year that they have been operating, ZebraCat has done some really impressive progress. They are about to launch a better version, which has gotten a lot of interest, 30,000 people signing up on the waitlist, and this is all through organic and word of mouth marketing. I think this episode is really interesting for anyone in the marketing space right now. You'll get a good understanding of where we are with the tech right now and what the future holds for you as a marketer. Of course, we're diving into what you need to be good at to survive as a marketer in an AI-powered world. We're also talking about how the platforms will develop and a lot of other things. I hope this episode will inspire your thinking about the future and also how you will position yourself in this AI-generated future. If you want to learn more about the ZebraCat project, go check it out at zebracat.ai. If you liked the episode today, make sure to follow my newsletter at thinkingmarketing.io as well as me on social media channels. And now, let's dive into the world of AI ads with Michael Baumgartner. Who are you, what you do, and what's your specialty? Thanks for having me. I'm Michael, CEO of ZebraCat. We are building an AI video generation platform for marketers. That means you as a marketer should be able to get from an initial idea, an initial thought, to a fully fledged commercial video in just minutes instead of days and weeks. That's really amazing. In this market where we are right now, with everything happening around AI, generative AI, it's really cool to sit here and talk about it with someone at the frontier. So. Can you explain how ZebraCat's AI-driven service works, both in terms of how will we be able to use it and what's the logic behind it? Yeah, sure. So for you as a marketer, basically you just come to our web platform and you can upload your own footage, your brand assets, and give us some more information about your company. And then in order to create video assets and video creatives, you either just share a prompt with us or you give us your entire script in case you have one. And what we do then basically in the background is we analyze your script or your prompt and we build the entire video. That means not only the raw footage, but also the music, sound, voiceover, text overlay. So basically really everything that is needed for a video ad or a marketing video. That's amazing. And at the current stage, because you're still developing the product really, what stage are you at right now? Right, so about two months ago, we released our alpha version. We did like lots of testing and iteration with marketers. And now we are actually very close to releasing the beta where we have like improvements from the first version. So we are already able to basically generate end-to-end marketing videos. It's not quite scalable yet. There's still like some bugs to be fixed, but we are very close to to releasing actually. So close to releasing, how does the videos look right now? Right, so you need to know that there are different ways to get to a video. So either you upload your own raw footage and we kind of like take care of the entire post-production. Or what we are also really excited about and what is a bit more in in the research phase still is actually also having fully AI-generated footage. So that means even if you have no assets at all, you can come to ZebraCat, type in your ideas and and get like ready-made video ads. That's still a bit in the development, but we are getting there. And also we learned that a lot of marketers are actually interested in combining those two. So having, for example, your own product shots or your UGC and then combining it, combining it with AI generated footage. That's very cool. So kind of like Madsen Chan was on the podcast a few episodes ago. Yeah, absolutely. We're seeing like AI generated visual hooks very specifically. That's yeah. Kind of- yeah, that's, that's very interesting that he came up with that idea because it perfectly fits the current technical capabilities. So for a hook, you need only two or three seconds. And also, if it isn't perfect, it might work even nicely because people are just wondering, what, what is that thing on my screen? So yeah, I think 
hooks is a really good starting point, but more long term, I think people will just use AI generated visuals to enhance their storytelling in a way they use stock footage today. So we believe that AI generated footage kind of takes the role of stock footage because it's more customized, more on brand. You can really fit it in smoothly into, into your video. Nice. And the solution that you're talking about now, where I bring my own footage or assets into your service, what will your service do then with that footage? Will it yeah. sequence it or will it like um, generate some kind of visuals over it or what's going to happen? Yeah. So let's say you have like a couple of hours of material. You could basically connect that to ZebraCat. And we would automatically select the right moments. We will do the text overlays. We do the music generation and matching with music. We get your brand assets in. So basically the entire post-production. And when you say find the perfect moment, etc., yeah, is this based on some kind of like database or high performing ads or where do you get that? Uh, yeah, exactly. So we basically built our own data set of around 100 million ads and marketing videos. And our system just learns from all the decisions that video editors made in the past that led to some good results. But more long term in the future, that kind of feedback should be live, right? So you should be able to connect to the advertising platforms and get like the live feedback on what performs and what doesn't. That's really interesting. So you mean that one user sees the ad or say thousand users sees one version of the ad, the system then learns and iterates maybe two versions to the next thousand users and test them against one another. Is that what you mean? Yes. Yeah, exactly. So, so in the more long term, we kind of think of it that ZebraCat will know best what kind of videos perform for your specific brand for your industry and also what does it mean for, for you to be on brand? How should be the cuts? How should be the style of the video and so on? So how do you see that working practically? Will you then integrate into like meta ads or what do you think? At some point, yes. Um, it's a bit more further on the roadmap. Right now we are really focused on nailing the video creation first, but that's also kind of the foundation for later on performance optimization. So you need to be able to create highly engaging videos in a very dynamic and fast way. So you can basically iterate and A-B test quickly and later on also get like that performance optimization element. Very cool. And what are the bottlenecks now? that you're facing? Video is very hard compared to, for example, image where you have like things like DALI and it's like one single models, one single model. In video, we need to bring together like all kinds of different models. So there's the music, there's sound, there's the raw footage, there's the text overlay and bringing all of that together so that the events happen in the right moment is, is really challenging, right? Because if you don't do it right for the viewer, it's very obvious that something is, is, is wrong with the, with the video or the pace is not good. So the bar to achieve a level where it's really acceptable for the, for the user is, is pretty hard. Okay. And would you say now with the beta version that you are passing the bar for acceptable quality? Well, it, it, it totally depends on, on the audience, right? You already have very quickly people who are excited and that might be more like a small business owner, but obviously a, a company like Adidas or Red Bull might not yet use a fully AI-generated video ad. We, we are not quite there yet. Okay, understand. And for this beta version that you're releasing now, how will anyone get access or what will be the... Yeah, absolutely. So we, we do have a wait list and we will basically in batches, let people in, let them play around and gather feedback and iterate with them together. So our main goal with the beta version is like to get as much feedback as possible and Im improve everything we did so far for the final release. 
do you see a big risk that big tech takes the whole pie in the generative AI game in the ad space, like Meta, Google, those guys? I mean, they're certainly very interested in that, in that topic because obviously they have a huge interest to get more and more content to their platforms and make life for advertisers easier. However, we, we don't think that they will take the entire pie of it because like basically marketing video is like such an enormous field with so many different use cases. And even if Meta goes all in, for example, on generative AI, then the, it will be very specific for this platform. And we see ourselves being like kind of in the middle of all social network and advertising platforms as the number one video creation platform and also being able to, for example, take the learnings from organic TikTok and bring them to your paid ads on, on Instagram, right? So this cross-platform learning is also something we, we see very high potential in. Uh, yeah, I understand. And also, I guess it will be hard for Meta to say that we have the one solution to rule them all. I mean, marketers will always look for ways to get ahead of one another. So absolutely. Like different service providers that you want to try. Yeah, absolutely. If we look a little bit towards the future, how do you see this space developing with generative AI? How do you think advertising will change in the coming years? Yeah, so obviously quality will improve massively. We already saw that in image, we'll see the same thing in video. I would also say that models will become more and more multimodal. So it's not just basically what we are working on. It's not just raw footage. It's about bringing footage, music, the message, everything together in context. And that's very powerful for marketing and, and for storytelling in general. So we are very excited about that. We think also that as the production costs for such videos will go down massively and at some point be just in the cents per minute, that will give enormous opportunities for A-B testing, for iterating. Yeah, it's like a really, really exciting time ahead. It is for sure. And at the same time, I know a lot of marketers are a little bit afraid of what the future holds. What do you think will be key competences in a generative AI future for marketers? I would say knowing the fundamentals about marketing will be still very rewarding because it gives you the opportunity to be creative with these tools. And also, I think a huge focus on just being able to, to being skillful in automation will be highly valuable because you have this unique opportunity as a marketer to have the impact of a team of 10 people as, as a single person. So if you're good in automation and if you're good in knowing the fundamentals, being able to come up with creative tactics, I think you're in a, in a really good position. Yeah, I agree. And I guess it's going to be, because there will be a lot of different opportunities. You as a marketer will be sold from any direction on which tool to use, etc. To So understand how you can leverage these tools will be very important. So good. Yeah, absolutely. Your resources will still be limited. You can't do everything all at once. And a little bit more on ZebraCat, because I think it's a very interesting company. Can you tell me a little bit about how it got started? How long have you guys been doing this? Where did the idea come from? Absolutely. So in my previous life, I, I worked on the analytics side of social media. So I had an AI company like analyzing social data. I joined Entrepreneur First about two years ago, which is like a program for finding your co-founder and finding your idea, basically. And met Reza there, my co-founder. Um, he has been working on video generation and video understanding for the past decade, basically did his PhD in his field. And for me, it was clear that marketing is kind of like the perfect application for this technology. So I was pretty excited about that. Also because in my previous businesses, I I experienced how hard it is to to work with agencies and, and get like good video content in, in a reasonable time. So yeah, together we basically did like lots of market research, lots of interviews, 
had a few iterations and ultimately came up with this thesis that we believe that by 2040, around 100 billion products and services will be sold by video AI every year. What year did you and your co-founder form this thesis? Well, it, it took us a while until we ended really up with, with that specific thesis. So I would say like about a year ago. Then I mean you have done a lot of progress in one year. It's a space where you need to be really, really fast and you feel that on a daily basis, right? So you're definitely in a race. There is lots of talent and lots of capital going into generative AI. It's it's obviously not a winner-takes-it-all market, but still it's very, very competitive and fast execution is, is really everything here. Yeah. So how does your team look and uh, yeah, the people that have helped you build this product this far in just a year yeah so we are still a relatively small team of of 10 people and it's like mostly engineering so it's like a mixture of computer vision scientists and engineers but also the classical back and front end roles yeah i think we'll we'll add some marketing positions soon as we are getting closer to the launch i can imagine it's not being too hard to hire when you're like a generative AI business. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's always hard to, to find great people, but it's definitely a topic that a lot of people are interested and excited about it. So that makes it a bit easier. So you're now generating videos. Have you tried any videos in the ads and seen any promising results on the creative so far? No, but actually we started trying out on our own TikTok channels. We also push out like AI generated hooks and we, we have like an entire plan of stuff we want to test in the upcoming month. But so far I, I cannot really tell you much about numbers yet. Okay, understand. Marketers these days and especially paid social marketers like to break down their creatives into modular creatives they use different frameworks for sequencing etc they always want a hook they always want a cta and then they break things down in between putting in the most effective communication and trying to find it through iterated testing are you building your videos around some specific frameworks or how does that work yeah so right now in the current version we don't do that quite yet also your your feedback here was very interesting but it's something that we totally look into, right? Having having good frameworks and also the AI being able actually to try out different hooks, not only like the actual what's what's said in the in the voiceover or shown in the text overlay, but also visual hooks. So I think there is a lot of room for experimentation and and getting to really interesting frameworks and and scripts here. Yeah, I agree, and yeah, that seems like a super powerful thing if you can really structure it because I assume that will also help the machine learning to throw things around. Yeah. It's yeah. Structured. yeah, trying basically different hooks, different call to actions, different storylines, exactly. So for marketers interested in this solution, which is super interesting and you guys are really pushing the boundaries here, where can they find you and how can they sign up for the better release? Yeah, sure. Just on our website, zebracat.ai. Sign up there for the waitlist. But also, if you're curious to learn more about the space, just send me over an email, michael at zebracat.ai. I'm always really curious to learn from marketers, understand how they would like to use our platform. So if you're curious, just, just reach out. Nice. I'll try it for sure as soon as it's ready for beta. Awesome. Yes. All right, Michael, thanks a lot for joining today. A lot of Thank you, Cherkin. And uh, this topic is really something that we'll revisit for sure. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. All right, that was it for today. I hope you got some inspiration about the future, learned a couple of things. And as Michael said, hit him up on LinkedIn if you want to learn more. Also go to zebracat.ai to see what they're doing. And if you liked the episode today, make sure to follow Thinking Marketing newsletter at thinkingmarketing.io as well as me on social media channels. 
That way, you will never miss out on insights and interesting topics within the world of marketing. And with that said, have a great day.